We welcome all of you tonight in the name of the Lord. It certainly is good and pleasant for a brethren to dwell together in unity. Amen. Welcome those who are joining us on live stream. We do appreciate your fellowship very much. Look forward to being able to see you face to face. This is our 29th message on the coming of the Lord. And there's about 11 more to go. And I have an ambitious task set out before me tonight. I need to debunk some of the things that have been taught about signs without it affecting hope. <clears throat> so I'm going to labor to define what a sign is, what signs are for, and then, of course, to relate to you what Jesus has said on the matter. Now, the doctrine of the centrality of Christ's second coming is quite prominent in Scripture. I really am I'm really confounded that more is not being said about the coming of Christ. Yeah. There's people preach more about the Antichrist than yeah. about the Christ. Right. Yeah. It's about great tribulation than the Christ. Now, we're talking about Christ tonight. <laughs> the doctrinal centrality of the coming of Christ. Paul said to the Corinthians, you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming. Again, in 1 Corinthians 1.8, he says, who shall confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 4, 5, that judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. At the Lord's table, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you assured that show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. I'm showing now the centrality of the coming of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 23, but every man in his own order, speaking of the resurrection, Christ the first fruits, and afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Mm -hmm. Philippians 3, 20 and 21, our conversation is in heaven from whence we look mm -hmm. for our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, 4, when Christ who is our life shall appear. Yeah. First Thessalonians 1, 10, we turn from idols to serve the living God and to wait. Mm -hmm. For his son from heaven. First Thessalonians 2.19. What is our hope, our joy, our crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Amen. First Thessalonians 3.13. To the end that he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness, even before God our Father, at the coming. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7, To you have trouble rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1, We beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, 14, uh, Keep the commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Titus 2, 13, Grace teaches us to deny godliness and worldly lust, to live righteously, soberly, and godly in this present world, looking yeah. for the blessed hope and glorious appearing yeah. of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. James 5, 7, be patient, therefore, brethren, be patient under the coming. Mm -hmm. First Peter 1, 7, to the trial of your faith, being the most more precious than that of gold, which perishes, Though it be tried with fire, may be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing. Yeah. First Peter four thirteen. Rejoice, 
Inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, and when his glory shall be revealed. You have talked about the centrality of First right. John 3, 2. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. We know, we know, we know that when he shall appear, uh -huh. we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Yes. Revelation 1, 7. Behold, he comes with the clouds. Yes. He, this is a central teaching. Amen. People have not done well that have withheld this from the people. Yes. You don't believe what I'm telling you. Just listen to the to the people that have access to the people the, through the media. Mm -hmm. Tens of millions of people worldwide. And you see how many people talk about this subject. Invariably, they're talking about Antichrist and the Great Tribulation, and distress of nations. So they are, these things are mentioned, make no mistake about it, but they are not the, in the capital letters. Amen. Yeah. You've got no right to be afraid of the Antichrist. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus is just going to breathe on them, and that's going to be it. Amen. You're destroyed with the breath of his mouth yeah. and the brightness of his coming. That's yeah. what the scripture says. Yeah. So that should establish the uh, the fact that the coming of the Lord is central. We're not talking about a tangential tangential subject. Something that doesn't have anything to do with life. Something that's not relevant. If you think your life has big problems, and it may. You have no idea what not being ready for Christ coming, what kind of problem that is. It dwarfs every other problem. And I would I'm going to step out on the water and do a little walking here. But I'm going to say that if a person believes this, it'll send, it'll send the counselors out of business. Yes, amen. Yeah. Because every man, yeah. I said every man yes. that has this hope in him, purifies himself. Yes. Yes. He doesn't need anybody to help him. Amen. Amen. Why not? Because God comes right alongside yes. of Amen. the person that believes this and has this hope in him. So getting the hope in the people, yes. that's the task. Yes. Now what is a sign? And the first time a sign was mentioned is in uh, Genesis where the celestial bodies were for signs. Mm -hmm. Not signs of something coming. Signs. The first time it was used in the sense like we're going to use it was in God's word to Moses. When through an angel he spoke to Moses in the wilderness. Moses at one time was an eloquent man. Stephen said he was eloquent in speech. But he'd been uh, away from Egypt for 40 years. Whatever he got in Egypt was out, got out of him. God told him what he said was going to have him do. Moses said, but behold, they'll not believe me. Nor hearken to my voice, they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. The Lord, Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? He said, A rod. He said, Cast it on the ground. He cast it on the ground. It became a serpent, and Moses fled from before it. The Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. Notice very carefully, he didn't say take it by the hand. Yeah. <laughs> That's the Lord, see, helped our unbelief. He took it by the tail. Yeah. Put forth his hand, caught it. It became a rod in his hand. Yeah. That they may believe that the Lord thy God of thy fathers, the God of Abraham, thy God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. Mm. Why, why are you going to do that? That they may, so it was a sign. The Lord said furthermore unto him, 
put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he plucked it out. And now he said, and he, he put his hand in his bosom and it, he took it out and behold, it was leprous. Yeah. White as snow. He said, put thy hand in thy bosom Again, you can see why this didn't happen in the 20th century. I mean, you should be able to really figure this stuff yeah. out. Yeah, this, this couldn't happen in our day. Uh -huh. God tells people to get together, and people, they can't even do that. Yeah. To say nothing of putting their hand in their bosom. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Put your hand in your bosom again, and he plucked it out of his bosom. Behold, it was turned again as the other flesh. Yeah. And it came to pass... If they will not believe thee, neither hearken unto the voice of the first sign, uh -huh. well. serpent, they will believe the voice of the latter sign. Yep. Now, Judah mentioned this, that only God can do these signs. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. These signs are not prognostications of what men are going to do. Yep. Amen. God's telling us ahead of time what he's going to do. Now the ten plagues that were upon Egypt, they were signs. Mm -hmm. Exodus 7, 3, God said, I'll harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Exodus 10, 1 says, The Lord said unto Moses, Go down to Pharaoh, for I've hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before them. Deuteronomy 6.22, Moses reviews the events. The Lord showed signs and wonders, great and sore, upon Egypt and upon Pharaoh. Deuteronomy said, those were signs, indications that God was doing something. They were signs that nature couldn't do. Man couldn't do it. See, men first have to be men first have to be convinced that God can do things that man can't do. And there's a lot of people are they're not convinced of this yet. A lot of church people, I'm telling you the truth, brethren. A lot of church people still aren't convinced. Oh, it's in the creeds, I understand that. And they formally will acknowledge it in an academic sense, but they're not convinced. Because they're seeking too much help elsewhere. Yeah, amen. So they haven't seen this yeah. yet. Signs. God spoke of a sign. A Sabbath day was a sign. Mm -hmm. Exodus 13, 6, and 7, 6 through 9. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days. There shall be no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be any leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, about this supper. This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. That's why we're doing this. Yeah. Uh, it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes and the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Amen. And this was remembering backward. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. This is remembering backward. Uh -huh. A sign to remember backward mm -hmm. what happened. Then there were miracles, the miracles of the, uh, God did with Israel. Numbers 14, 11. The Lord said to Moses, how long will this people provoke me? How long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have showed unto them? Not to mention the crossing of the Red Sea, not to mention manna falling, not to mention bread coming, water coming out of a rock. Not to mention your shoes not wearing out. Not to mention that nobody got sick for those 40 years. That's right. No one was sick. How long are they? Those were signs. 
We would say under, the, under Christ, if God be for us, who can be against us? That would be our conclusion. That wasn't the conclusion now of the Israelites. They said, why did God bring us out here? Going to kill us? Those were signs, signs to assess what was happening then, not what was going to happen. Signs for right at that time. Again, there's a, well, a notable sign was one given to Gideon. Gideon lived at the tail end of a dry spell. Oh, it was dry. Now, Gideon, he hasn't got a fair shake. He'd been criticized unduly. And he was like a coward, and that's why he was out threshing wheat at night. Maybe you've heard somebody say that. Well, it's nothing but a lie. It's Amen. not true. He was bold. That's why he was threshing the wheat. Yeah. Amen. He was threshing the wheat at night because he wanted to get the threshing done. Mm -hmm. Amen. And an angel appeared to him. And... Gideon said, and he told him, Gideon asked him, where's, where, where's all the miracles? <laughs> where's all the miracles? We got this illustrious history of miracles. Ooh, it almost sounds like it's today. Yeah. Where's all the miracles? Yeah. And he told him he's going to use him to deliver. He said, I'm a thou mighty man of valor. Yeah. It's like Gideon said, who, me? You're talking to me. He said unto him, Gideon to the angel, If now I find grace in thy sight, then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Show, I, I don't want to be like dreaming this or imagining this. Show, show me a sign that you're really talking to me. Depart not hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth thy present and set it before thee. And he said, I, he, he just thought, don't, don't, don't leave now. He said, I'll tarry till you come again. Gideon went in, made ready a kid and eleven cates of an ephah of flour. The flesh he put in a basket, and he put a broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak tree and presented it. <clears throat> Will we go any further, Gideon? There's a, something you have to do. The angel said unto him, Take the flesh, the unleavened cakes, lay it on this rock. And he presented it. And the angel of God said to him, Take the flesh and the unleavened bread, lay it on the rock, and pour out the broth. And he did so. Then the angel of the Lord put forth the end of his staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and eleven cakes. There rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and eleven cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. When Gideon perceived he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, because I have seen the angels of the Lord face to face. He read the sign. Yeah. He read the sign. There was a, I'm establishing what a sign is here. Now there's a sign of Jeroboam. First Kings 13, 3. He gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. <clears throat> Behold, the altar shall be rent. This is we split in two. And the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar and saying, Lay hold on him! And his hand which he put forth against him dried up so that he could not pull it in again. The altar also was rent and the ashes poured out upon the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sign. This word of the Lord yeah. must have been believed. Mm -hmm. There was a sign for Hezekiah. So you know how the word signs. First Kings 28. Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be a sign that the Lord will heal me? And that I shall not go up into the house of the Lord the third day. Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have with the Lord, that the Lord will do a thing to thee, that he has spoken, shall the shadow go forward ten degrees or back ten degrees. Which, which, what, which sign would you like? <clears throat> like the sun to go forward or backward? Hezekiah answered, It's a light thing. 
for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Let the shadow go back backward 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward, by which he had gone down to the dial of Ahaz. It was a sign. Yeah. It's not fashionable to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. If you have difficulty believing God, ask God to help you with that. Amen. Amen. Ask God to help you with uh -huh. that. I know that some of you are very sensitive in this area. Don't be ashamed to ask God to, to help you with that. That's what he was doing there. He wanted to be sure. They were living when there were false prophets making all kind of allegations about God. Then there was a, the sign of the prophet Jonah. And Jesus said, well, wicked and adulterous generation seek it after a sign. There's no sign. There's no sign to be given it. There's no sign. A wicked and adulterous generation, no sign, no sign will be given to it. But the sign of the prophet Jonah, he left them and departed. <laughs> well, that sign took place 100 years ago, hundreds of years ago. Centuries ago that took place. It was a sign. <laughs> How's that for a sign? There's something up there. It was something back there. Now, Jesus used the word sign, and he maintained that men have a responsibility to pick up on signs. Mm -hmm. Matthew 16, 3. In the morning it shall be foul weather today. This is what men say. In the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, ye hypocrites, ye discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. Yeah. All right. What kind of times are we living in? A lot of people don't know. I covered the experience of the those of the tribe of Issachar. They knew the times and what the people should do. Now there's a there's an unwarranted lack of understanding in this area. There are too many for want of a better term, blowhards mm -hmm. that are preaching and teaching. And they're not telling people what kind of times we're living in and what these kind of times require mm -hmm. of people that are following Christ. And yeah, one yeah. thing that they do not require is infrequency and a lack of interest yeah. and brevity. And this is, they don't require those kind of things. Yeah, right. Know the times. And the miracles Jesus performed, particularly before his disciples, they were signs. John wraps up his post-resurrection appearances. Many other signs did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. That's just the ones after he rose from the dead. They were signs. He was a help in their unbelief. Amen. You remember how the two on the road to Emmaus thought that everything was flushed away? Yeah. Now that Jesus died. But he convinced him by signs, signs that only he could do, that this is really me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have not been defeated, and the plan's going right on ahead. Amen. Just as God ordained. And then the apostles, they gave signs. Mm -hmm. Acts 5, 12, by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among, among the people, not in special secluded areas, yeah. among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Of course, if a person doesn't have a unique God-ordained message to deliver, it's not right for that person to seek signs. Yeah, that's right. God has something to say yeah. to our generation. It's not a new doctrine, not a new gospel, but he's got something that needs to be said to this generation. It needs to be said. Yeah, but only people... <laughs> that know the times are able to do it. Now let's uh, talk about the signs that are associated with the coming of the Lord. <clears throat> Jesus asked him about this, and they asked it in a, in a triple question. It was one question, had three parts. 
Matthew 24, 3. This passage of Scripture is given to theologians of no end of trouble. And he sat on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him, and you know, if you know Scripture, you know who these disciples were. They weren't the twelve. They were Peter, James, John, and Andrew. Five men heard the Olivet Discourse. <laughs> that was a, I was well up in years before I realized that. <clears throat> they gave to it privately, saying, tell us. He just got through telling them about the temple. One stone is not going to be left upon another. When shall these things be, and what should be the sign of, that's one thing, when shall these things be, the destruction of the temple, and what should be the sign of thy coming, that's the second thing, and the end of the world, that's the third thing. So it was a threefold question. And when he answered it, he answered all three. But it wasn't like Roman numeral number one, then Roman numeral number two, then Roman numeral number three. It wasn't like that. They almost looked like they're kind of jumbled up. But there were things common in all, all three of these. The coming of the Lord, the end of the world, coming of Christ, there's some things like they were parallel in all of these. <clears throat> now, first, the first thing he told them was that men, many are going to come saying they're Christ. He called them false Christs. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, understand, this was not just people that were preaching another Jesus. Uh -huh. It was people claiming uh -huh. they were the answer. Claiming they were the uh -huh. Messiah, so to speak. Matthew 24, 3, uh, 20, uh, Mark 13, 5, and 6. Jesus answering them again said, Take heed lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. It shall deceive many. It's not always a flesh and blood person. Sometimes it's a Lion spirit speaking to yeah, right. someone else. Now, this is a sign. And here's how you should view it. You see, well, there are people doing that today. Then you say, Jesus is coming. Yeah, amen. Right. Now, he's going to tell them what he thinks. This doesn't mean he's, it's right around the corner. That's not what this means. This means when this stuff starts happening, yeah. you remember what I said. Yeah. I'm coming again. That's right. uh -huh. Again, they were going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now, this wasn't common at the time Christ walked the earth. There were world empires, mm -hmm. world empires from uh, Babylonia mm -hmm. and the uh, Medes and the Persians and Greece and Rome, and they were world empires. They were, they were they had one world governments, mm -hmm. had for some time. Yeah. There wasn't the kind of jostling of nations that would exist later. Mm -hmm. In the days of these kings, the God of heaven mm -hmm. raised up his kingdom, and the other kingdoms, there never has been a world empire since. Some tried. Uh -huh. yeah. Some tried to conquer the world. He said, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. Mm -hmm. All these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Yeah. So we're not, we're not talking about the end. Uh -huh. We're talking about something that will remind you the end is on the way. Yeah. Amen. This is a sign. This is a sign. Wars, rumors of wars. Don't be troubled about this. This proves Jesus is coming. Yeah. Uh -huh. That we read about all these conflicts over in other Russia and all these. You say, well, well, things are getting pretty bad. What are we going to Jesus is coming. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what you should remember that's right. when you hear these signs. Uh -huh. Luke said, you shall hear of wars and commotions. Be not terrified. These things must first come to pass, but the end is not yet. Yeah. This isn't it's not going to end this way. Signs. Nation rising against nation. 
as well as wars and rumors of wars. Matthew 24, 7, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. Mark says, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There's a sign. It's a sign. What's the sign of your coming? What's the sign of the end of Jerusalem? What's the sign of the end of the world? These are some of the signs. Yes, so when you see this nation against nation, you shout out, Jesus is coming. Amen. Say, when is he coming? That's not the point. That's right. The hope isn't when Jesus is coming. Uh -huh. It's that he's coming. Yes. Amen. That's the hope. And there are going to be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse different places. Matthew 24, 9, they shall deliver you up, for, be afflicted for my sake, and to kill you. You'll be hated of all nations for my sake. Mark puts it this way, nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against nation. There'll be earthquakes in diverse places. There's going to be famines and troubles. <clears throat> uh, these are the beginnings of sorrows. Not the end. Not the end. The begin see the signs of Christ coming invariably are is view being viewed as something that immediately precedes Christ's coming. Now some signs do, as Jesus will say, but this isn't the ministry of them. The ministry of them is God told you these were going to come to pass. The social and economical state of the world would tell the people this couldn't happen. But when you see it happen, then you know. Yes. Jesus is coming. Amen. The same God who told us that when you see this stuff begin to happen, yeah. that you weren't used to happening before, then you lay a hold of this. Jesus is coming. Luke says, great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs there shall be from heaven. What are you going to do? Shaking your boots? Well, it could scare you. I admit that. But you think back what Jesus said. I will come again. This isn't going to end this way. This isn't going to end this way. It's not going to end up with everything falling apart. It's going to end up with everything being brought together. Yes, amen. That's God's purpose. God's purpose isn't that everything's going to fall apart, although it will. His purpose is to gather into one all things into one. Amen. That's his purpose. Yes. Your guarantee that this is going to happen is that what he said here happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you see the sign, mm -hmm. Jesus is coming. Amen. Also something, a sign was his disciples would be delivered up and afflicted. At first, they had favor with all the people. When, they, when Pentecost began, the, the disciples were popular. They had favor with all the people. But that's going to change. Jesus said that was going to change. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Mark 13, 9 says, Take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to the councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten. You shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Luke 21, 12 says, But before all these things, until they, hands, they, lay, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. It shall turn to you for a testimony. Now settle it, therefore, in your heart. Settle it, not to meditate before what ye shall answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to resist. Amen. They may kill you, but they can't hurt you. Amen. Amen. When this happens, you say, Jesus is coming. And he told them that the Jews are going to be hated of all nations. Matthew 24, 9 says, Then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you. Ye shall be hated of all nations. That wasn't a Roman nation. It's a Jewish nation. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Mark 13, 13 says, You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Luke 21 says, You'll be hated of all men for my name's sake. What do we do when we see the Jews being hated? Of all men. 
Jesus is coming. Amen. That's what. We, that's what. That's your conclusion. That's what it's got to be. Jesus is coming. It's going to get so bad that people that were close are going to betray each other and be offended at each other. Matthew twenty four ten says, "Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another." It happened when Jerusalem was destroyed. It's going to happen as we draw near to the coming of the Lord and as we draw near to the end of the world. That's going to happen. Don't you be preaching a family gospel. Don't any of you dare to do it. Jesus didn't come. We all want good families. Now make no mistake, we're not against harmonious families. God forbid. And any of us that have harmonious families, give God thanks. Amen. Because Jesus says, I didn't come for that. Yeah. I come to set a man against yes. mother, against mother-in-law, against daughter-in-law, and so forth. He said that a man's foes will be those of his own house. Yeah. I'm going to show you that people aren't as close as it looks. Yeah. Uh-huh. What are you going to do when that happens? Yeah. Jesus is coming. That's the, that's the conclusion you've got to come to. He said, be betrayed both by parents. Parents turn their children in. And brethren. And kinsfolk. And friends. And some of them shall they cause to be put to death. That's Luke 21, 16. That's a sign. When that comes to pass, some of you have been hurt. I know it. My heart goes out to you. That doesn't mean you've caused a lot of trouble, and that isn't what that means. Mm-hmm. What that means is Jesus is coming. Amen. That's, right. That's what you've got to hold on to. Yes. You can't focus your attention on your experience. It's too erratic, yes. isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. It's too erratic. Focus, Jesus is coming. He's confirmed it by this kind of trouble that raises up. And false prophets, he says, arise and deceive many. Matthew 24, 11, many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And this is a, this is a heartache to anyone who's serious about God. That such a thing could happen. Why do we have false prophets? Well, in this case, we've got them so you can be sure Jesus is coming. Yes, amen. So when false prophets arise, you don't step back and say, why did that happen? You say, Jesus is coming. Yes, amen. That's why he told us about this. It's a sign. Every time you see false prophets, turn your head upward. Yes, amen. Say, my redemption is drawn near. Yes. And he said uh, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. The world's going to get very wicked, and wickedness is going to spread and proliferate. And because it does, many are going to lose their first love. The love of many will wax cold. Here's what happened. If this much distance between the world, the church, and the world. About this much. In the world, it sinks down. But they, <laughs> they maintain, the church maintains the same distance. But the trouble is now the world's, the church is down there where the world once was. That's right. Amen. Uh-huh. Brother Ray Winkle, who wrote the book, The Flood Was Right. Mm-hmm. He said the church is wedded to the world and the world is her wedded name. Yep. And the church today is a little bit worse than the world was when I was young went down. Love waxed cold. Iniquity got so prevalent it was hard to be godly so some people just quit being godly. Uh Oh, they like to be called Christian and all that. I understand. But what do you you think when you see this? The love of many waxed and cold. I see it happen sometimes and there's not always something you can do about it. Sometimes you can warn them and maybe perhaps awaken someone to righteousness that they sin not. That's a blessed experience if you can do this. But if you can't, and you see the love of many waxing cold, you exercise yourself. You can't, 
You can't reverse that trend. Don't sit on and cry about it. Yeah. Say to yourself, Jesus is coming. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that sign's for, Amen. see? Yeah. To show you that. Mm. And he said the gospel's going to preach, be preached in all the nations for a witness. Mm -hmm. One writer says a witness against them. Mm. Sorry, that is what it says. Yeah. This gospel of the king, gospel of the kingdom, mm -hmm. not this church gospel. Not the family gospel. Yeah, uh -huh. Not the economic gospel. This gospel of the kingdom. John the Baptist said the kingdom of God is near. Jesus said the kingdom of God is near. Yeah. Philip went down to Samaria and preached the kingdom of God. Paul said, I preach the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. We're preaching a kingdom, brethren. A kingdom is going to prevail over everything else. Amen. That's got to be preached. It's good to tell people what they ought to do up to a point, mm -hmm. up to a point. But there comes a time you got to preach what God's going to do because the kingdom of God has to do with what God's going to do. Amen. Yeah. He said the knowledge of the Lord is going to cover the earth. Mm -hmm. It may not seem likely, but that has nothing at all to do with it. It shall cover the earth. This gospel shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then the end will come. Remember all the other signs he said, the end's not yet. Don't, not yet, not yet. Not yet. Not until this pervades the world. I'm going to show you. God says that I'm big enough and I'm strong enough to make the gospel the prevalent message in the world. Amen. You don't think I can do that? You don't think God can do that? Well, he can. you got another thing coming. Mm -hmm. He can make the gospel a prevalent message so the gospel of the kingdom, his kingdom, the prevailing kingdom, the kingdom that's over all the kingdom we're going to inherit, that gospel is preached to the whole world. Yeah, amen. When it's happened, what do you say? Well, last we did it. Jesus is coming. Amen. That's what we say. And he, uh, he told him another side of Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. He hinted at it when he said this temple. Mm -hmm. Remember they were, they were sitting. Jesus was sitting with his disciples outside the temple. Mm -hmm. And he was watching how people put their money in the treasury. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, can you imagine that? I thought a good... Every collection plate should have a little sign on the bottom. Jesus is watching. Yes, amen. <laughs> That's what he was doing. Yeah. He was watching how people mm -hmm. put their money in the treasury. Some people blew a trumpet. Da, notice it. Pow, big bag of money. Here come this widow woman. All she had was two mites, which was the smallest of denomination of coin. She had two of them. She put them in there, and Jesus stopped every. Mm. Did you see what that woman put in there? Well, they didn't. Mm -hmm. They hadn't been noticing. They didn't have the eyes Jesus had. He said, look at that woman. She put more in than all of them did collectively. Yeah. That disciples took him outside. <laughs> right. They showed him the buildings. Mm -hmm. Remember that? They showed him the buildings. Look. <laughs> I mean, widow's mites, uh, but we, we can't build this kind of thing with widow's mites. We've got to have uh, annual pledges and monthly sacrifices. And Yes, he says, you see, no, you haven't seen these buildings right. See all these buildings? That's what they said to him. See these buildings? How ornate they are? This wasn't built with widow's mites. He said, see all these buildings? One stone will not be left upon another. That arrested their attention. Because yes. this was the house of God. Uh -huh. That arrested their attention. And they asked him, when will this be? And that's when he began giving this, uh -huh. giving this discourse. And, and Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. Not only the temple, but in the process, the whole city was going to be destroyed. Matthew 24, 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel... 
is when they brought something unholy in the holy place. Stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Like, figure it out. Then let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains. See, that's telling it was a temporal, temporal judgment. Get up in a high place. Get out of there. Don't take any, don't come down and take anything out of the house. Neither let him who's in the field turn back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are a child. Oh, how merciful. Some women are going to be carrying babies when this comes. And to them that give them suck in those days. There are people that have little infants. Have to go to hoof it up in the hills of Judea carrying infants. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. Yeah. It's right to pray that yeah. something greater than you can bear is not put on you, yeah. Amen. making your escape. Yes. Amen. And I pray it's not on the Sabbath day. This is Jesus. Mm -hmm. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world of this time, known or ever shall be. And if you wonder what it was like, you just you take the time to read Josephus' account of the destruction of Jerusalem, it'll stand your hair on end. Yeah. Then he adds a little something. He says, well, Jerusalem is going to be destroyed, but the days are going to be shortened. Mm. Yeah. It's going to look like everything's just going to fall apart, and that's going to be, it's going to be it. No hope. Mm. Matthew 24, 22, except those days should be shortened, mm. there should no flesh be saved. Yeah. But for the elects, wait, wait a minute, let me make sure I got this. Yeah, that's just what the word is. Yes. But for the elect's sake, so who are the main people? Oh, yeah. Who are the main people? Are there people? All people telling us who the main people are. Uh -huh. yeah. For the elect, this is a God. God's got his Amen. main people. You better not have a different main people. That's right. And God, for the elect's sake, it should be shortened. Mark says, except the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved before the elect's sake. Whom he hath chosen, Amen. he has shortened the days. All right, so you see Jerusalem destroyed. When you see Jesus is coming. You see it was, it was cut short before hopelessness entered in. It was cut. Jesus is coming. See, the sign was to confirm to you that Jesus is coming. And then... Remember, he told them at the beginning, false Christ would arise. Then after this, false Christ would rise again. Mm -hmm. Here's what Matthew 24, 24 says. For there shall false, arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall go, show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, behold, I've told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he's in the desert, go not forth. He's in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning shineth out of the east, and shineth even into the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. For the saved, that means wherever Jesus is, that's where the saved are going to be. For the lost, wherever the devil is, that's where they're going to be. So what, when this begins to happen, what do you say? Jesus is coming. Yes, amen. Yeah, amen. And he tells he told it, nature is going to suffer a demise. Nature is going to, something's going to be disruptive in, in nature. Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, that was when Jerusalem was destroyed. Shall the sun be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. He's not talking about like immediately afterward. Mm -hmm. He's saying, before I come, the world's got to end, mm -hmm. and before the world ends, Jerusalem's got to be destroyed, mm -hmm. and all these signs have to yes. take place. Huh? So when you see them take place, you've got to believe, mm -hmm. I'm sending my son again. Yes. Amen. Jesus is coming again. <coughs> Mark says, in those days after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars of heaven shall fall, the powers that are in, 
heaven shall be shaken. I'm not sure all that is involved in that, but he's already told us that he's going to, nature is going to be delivered from the bondage of corruption. And things are going to begin to fall apart. Maybe it'll look like more tornadoes. Maybe it'll look like more tsunami waves. Maybe, maybe there'll be earthquakes like there was in L.A. Friday, 5.1 with 100 aftershocks. Hmm? What does all that mean? Jesus is coming. Amen. That's, that's what they're signs of. Yeah, right. Not when Jesus is coming, uh -huh. but that he is coming. Yeah. Because the thing that's going to save you is your hope. Yeah. Men are saved by hope. Amen. Every man that has this hope in him, the him being Christ, will purge himself of all filthiness of the flesh. He'll, he'll perfect it. He'll get ready for it. Yeah. So when you see any of these things happen, don't think this means there's going to be a lot more time. Don't think that way. There may be, but don't think that way. Think, I got to get ready. I got to get ready for the coming of the Lord. And if you're not ready, as I understand Scripture to teach, particularly in the parable of the ten virgins, that things are going to shut down shortly before Jesus comes, so no one's going to be able to get in. Yeah. Time's going to run out. Right. They'll crawl for rocks and mountains, but they won't be able to get any oil. Yes. Right. There's going to come a time when the oil's going to run out, and sorry, yeah. we're not. See, at the first, the believers share their oil. Uh -huh. yeah. But there comes a time. I, no more It's going to take all the oil I got to make the transition. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to use every ounce, every drop of yeah. oil I got yeah. to meet the bridegroom. That yeah. time's going to come. Mm -hmm. And the thing to do is prepare for it now. Yeah. Get a lot of oil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you share your oil, make sure you don't deplete the resource. Yeah. It's like that widow woman, remember that came to the prophet and said, my husband died, and he was a prophet, you know, his, her husband was a prophet. He died, and I got this massive debt that was left behind, and I bet, I bet I'm going to have to sell my boys, I think, for him to work off the debt. He said, well, no. He said, um, what, do you, what do you have in your house? Well, that's just as I have a little, uh, a little cruise of oil. That's all I got. Ah, that's good. We can, we can work with that. We, can, we can work with that. Yeah. Whatever you got, no matter how small it is, we, we, we can work with that. Yeah. Here's what I want you to do. You got some neighbors? Yeah, I got neighbors. I want you to go to your neighbors and borrow vessels. Not a few now. Get a lot of them. The objective is to fill up the house of the vessels. Vessels of all kinds, from cups to flagons. That is, from small bottles to big ones. Fill up. Fill up the house. Get all these empty bottles in there. She said, they're all in now. Got them wall-to-wall -wall bottles. What do I do? Take that little cruise oil and start pouring. She filled up the first bottle. Oh, cruise Cruise oil right where it was before. Another bottle. She filled up every one of those bottles yeah. with what was in that bottle, yeah. and it didn't go down one bit. Yeah. Then you remember what he told her? Now sell the oil and pay your debt. Yeah. yeah. That's what God has done. Right. If you'll let him. Mm -hmm. We're filled with the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. That's the objective of God according to Ephesians 4. Filled with all the fullness of God. You're like a, a bottle. Mm -hmm. You may be a small bottle. You may be a big bottle. Mm -hmm. But it's important that what you're filled up with, you're filled up with the right stuff. Amen. Yeah. Getting ready for Jesus' return is for whatever size bottle you got. Yeah. However much you can contain, mm -hmm. fill it up. Amen. Yeah. And God will enlarge your heart so you yeah. can put more in. Yeah. Fill it up. Every time you see any of these signs that we mentioned, 
every time you see one of them, immediately think to yourself, Jesus is coming again. He's going to gather us unto himself when he comes. When he comes, all our troubles are going to be over. When he comes, he's going to bring, he's going to take us where he is now. When he comes, he's going to change this vile body that it might be likened to his glorious body. That's what you think about. Don't think about how the world's falling apart. That's not what these are meant to do. They're not meant to make you worry about the world falling apart and if you're going to be there and what will happen to you. That's not what they're designed to do. They're designed to confirm to you that Jesus is coming again. And if the great God of heaven could predict all those signs we read and they all come to pass and most of us say, I've seen a lot of them come to pass, then you know that this word he's left about the coming of Christ is a true word. Amen. Now you wait for his son from heaven, and don't you give up. Amen. You wait for his son from heaven. You look forward to it. When you get up in the morning, this could be the day. Yes. You, you live with that in your mind. And if you do, Jesus will make you able. Now, remember all these signs that he gave? He said that inimical powers in heaven would be shaken. Matthew 24, 29, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Luke 21, 26, the powers of heaven shall be shaken. There'll be empires lose their power. There'll be customs that'll pass away. <laughs> People that have deceived, they'll, they'll lose their power. These are spiritual powers, you understand? Right, yeah. that, that governed men, uh -huh. like the Prince of Persia, uh -huh. Prince of Greece, they're going to be shaken. God's going to shake uh -huh. the underworld that's up there. He's yeah. going to shake it. Yeah. I gather this is going to be something that precedes the last great harvest, uh -huh, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to, uh, then Jesus will come in all of his glory. He's going to come, the scripture says, in all his glory, in the Father's glory, and the angel's glory. That's, a, that's just about all the glory there is, I'd say. that yeah, yeah. It's going to come in his glory, mm -hmm. the fullness of it. He's in it now. Yeah. going to come in the fullness of it. going to come in the Father's glory. Mm -hmm going to come in the angel's glory. You know this is going to happen because those signs he mentioned Amen. have happened. Now, brethren, go and uh, be of strong courage. Have the boldness to be godly. Have the boldness to be godly, whether it's popular or not. You'll get enough strength to make it through the day that's really all you need, isn't it? Yes. Make it through the day or maybe even through the hour. Mm -hmm. He'll give you the strength to make it through the hour until that time comes when Jesus comes and an abundant entrance into his everlasting kingdom yeah. will be ministered to you. And the former things, Isaiah said, will not be brought to mind. You won't even remember all the bad stuff that's happened to you. you <laughs> all the good stuff's going to drown it out. Live in that hope, brother. Brother Ricky has our closing our exhortation.